Welcome to the Metal Voice special treat today at Heavy Montreal. The one, the only, the drummer of Voivod, Mr. Away. Mr. Away. Oui, hello. How do you do? <laughs> I'm, I'm great. <laughs> All right. So, very exciting. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm very excited. I've been a big fan of uh, Voivod since, you know, you guys started off in the, you know, the first album. The new album, The Wake. Yeah. All right. Tell me about, you know, uh, the musical direction on The Wake and it'll be released and when it will be released. All right. So, uh, The Wake is like... Um, more of a prog metal album, uh, similar to uh, Phobos or uh, Damage and Hatras, and uh, with a long story all the way through. Uh, it's very intricate, and uh, it's coming out on uh, September 21st. But there are still, uh, of course, the trash metal elements and the punk side as well. Mm. It's different than the last LP, uh, Target Earth. It's uh, similar to Post Society that we released two years ago. The the EP. It's sort of yeah, a it's, uh, yeah. It's sort of a continuation of uh, Post Society uh, with yeah. the new lineup. And uh, uh, if anything, um, uh, it's uh, it's sort of uh, with the new lineup. It's sort of a new direction and. Um, sort of fusion metal in a way <laughs> so we uh, we work a lot on the um, on the music and the, the lyrics and all that so um, uh, it's uh, there's a very good chemistry right now with the band yeah so what is the writing process like does it start off with uh, uh, lyrics does it start off with an idea a theme or does it start off with a, a, a drum beat or maybe a guitar riff uh, it depends uh, most of the times uh, Chewy the guitar player will come with some riffs and will it will mutate slowly into a Voivod song uh, when I, um, I um, add drums and uh, Rocky uh, comes with his bass and all that so uh, but uh, Rocky was involved with the writing as well uh, the bassist and uh, uh, some parts were influenced by the lyrics and vice versa I also came up with a, a couple of drum beats uh, like in the, the song always moving uh, and um, so it's it's a mixture of everybody's idea but the main writer is Chewy for sure so I mean I guess my question like we all love Piggy right yeah. you know he was like probably one of the most underrated uh, guitar guitarist ever I think mm -hmm. what does Chewy bring to Voivod that you know I'm not saying what Piggy didn't but what does he bring to the band especially to this album I mean um, I can still hear uh, the Voivod signature and Piggy's chord uh, in a Chewy style but it's, uh, it's it, uh, Piggy was a bit more old school, a motorhead and such. Uh, Chewy is more of a, a newer um, uh, school. Uh, what I really like is more of his uh, jazzy style in a way. It's not jazz, but uh, it makes me play differently. And uh, so uh, he brings a lot to the new style of Voivod. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Who, I mean, you got like a, a very unique rush like g drumming style. You know, I mean, uh, I mean, is Neil Peart one of your 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 top? You know, oh drums. yeah, yeah. Neil Peart, uh, Terry Bozio, uh, they are idols of mine. Um, uh, when from I yes. yeah from uh, 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 Bib Rufford from Yes, um, and uh, Terry Bozio from Zappa is my uh, favorite. Um, and but uh, uh, when we toured with Rush in 1990, I spent a lot of time uh, studying uh, Neil Peart from beside the stage. You know. Uh, so so what was it? I, I didn't know. That. I, I remember. I forgot about this completely. What was it like touring with Rush? I mean, well, uh, I mean what do you remember from those days? I remember that when we played Astronomy the Mind uh, from Pink Floyd, the crowd was louder than the music and it was quite a relief because I had seen people get booed off the stage opening for Rush before, so uh, it's really hard to open for Rush, so uh, it's quite a relief. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, speaking of Astronomy the uh, uh, Mind, right? A Pink Floyd cover, I mean it was probably one of the biggest songs you had, accessibility, commercial, commercial songs. Yeah. It, was it difficult to get acquire the rights to perform that song on an album? Because Pink Floyd doesn't give away no. their songs that easy, right? Uh, it, it actually, um, through MCA, we were um, able to reach out to David Gilmore, and he had to approve uh, the version, and he did. And uh, and uh, we sort of had to explain that um, because we were fans of Sid Barrett, 
uh, we wanted to do a song from the first Pink Floyd album, but because Piggy was a fan of David Gilmour, we did the version on Umaguma, the live version, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, so we had to sort of explain that. And, uh, but he uh, yeah, stamped it, and uh, it became a, a heavy rotation on MTV and yeah. helped us a lot. Much music too. We ended up touring with Soundgarden, Fit No More, Rush, and so it's good, good, uh, good time. I, I would say that that Pink Floyd cover is better than the original, and I'm sure well, that, we're going to be modest here. I'm sure you've heard that too, right? Yeah. Man. Many people say that, but in my head, I don't know if it's logical to say that. So it's a, it's a tough one. Do you think the band is bigger today than it was, okay, in the 80s, 90s, from the 80s, from you guys start, let's say Nothing Face. Is the band bigger today than the Nothing Face years? Globally, globally now. Um, it's definitely very well established. It's hard to tell, but for sure, the band is bigger now than when we reformed for the first edition of Heavy Montreal 10 years ago. Yeah. Uh, we, we gained in uh, popularity, but so did Trash Metal, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's true, true. Okay, your favorite Voivod album and why? Probably Killing Technology. Really? Yeah, yeah it has all the uh, ingredients of... Um, what Voivod it's, is supposed to be, uh, some futuristic punk metal uh, mixed with psychedelic and prog music. and But uh, it's also an uh, exciting era for me, if I think about it, you know. And uh, uh, aside from that, you know, I am um, really, really proud of the very first album and the very uh, last album, uh, the future album, uh, actually, The Wake. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you. Welcome to the Metal Voice today on the show. Oh yeah, here we are. The one, the only, Snake from Voivod. What's going on, Snake? Hello, everyone. It's going good, yeah. All right, so uh, first things first. Voivod is playing the Jazz Fest. Yeah. All right, like, I mean, what's the connection here? I mean, was it your idea? Was it Montreal's idea? What, what happened? Well, at first, they, they offered us to, to be part of it, and we're, well, you know, like a, a bit surprised, but... You know, um, I guess, you know, it's understandable at a some certain point because uh, what we're doing is, is music. Uh, basically, it's music. Okay, it's metal, it's punk, it's progressive, it's all, a lot of things, but um, it's music. And I thought that, you know, being part of it, it's, it's, a, it's a great honor first to be part of the festival. Uh, they're celebrating 40 years now. And we're just following like a six-year career, and um, I think it's a great opportunity to, because Voivod always try to go over the boundaries of you know of music and diminished gender. suspended yeah. chords. Yeah, three and tones. For the, for the, that's right. Yeah. So the people don't understand. You know, there's a lot of jazz chord elements in the yeah. Voivod music that you so, might not understand if you if you listen to it as an observer. Yeah, it's like a, a it's not obvious, but not uh, obvious. but uh, you know. Voivod tree tone, you know, piggy scores and stuff like that. Yeah, it's yeah, a, yeah. and um, but jazz. I mean, I mean, the festival, you know, includes sometimes many different artists. And they're not really from you know jazz roots, but they they try to expand a little bit, of, uh, uh, a little bit more uh, than the jazz. And uh, for us, uh, it's a great opportunity to. Uh, to show what we've got and and, yeah, to, yeah, and yeah. to bring something because we have a little surprise tonight. Oh yeah, the brass. Yeah, so uh, that was a uh, that that's gonna be something I think. Yeah. And, and, and I've heard it, and you know it's gonna be a huge surprise. All right, so I was talking to some guys. There's a there's a Voivod documentary. Uh -huh. I mean, at least in the works. Yeah. I mean, I know I don't know how much of it has been shot or not. So can you tell me what we you could tell us about this? And this is exciting for me. A Voivod yeah. documentary. So tell me what you could tell us about this documentary. Well, it's uh, uh, Sam Dunn started doing some work a uh, while, while ago. And uh, we're going to do like a, uh, another section of it. It's just like footage. And, and uh, uh, we'll, well, actually, I don't have much information right now about it, but um, it's gonna be all, all, all like the, the career, uh, our career so far, and uh, you know, it's it's 
it's a long journey in, in so the boy I mean, all, all, all actors like you're talking about like uh, Jason Newstead yeah you're trying to get at least I'm not I, I'm not saying yeah you're gonna get sections, all the characters all, yeah. all, all the players throughout yeah. the years yeah we'll try to get like a, the big picture of, of, of what Voivod Starting uh, off with Jean-Pierre. Uh, yeah, yeah, went through to uh, different uh, lineups and stuff like that, uh, yeah. different period of time. And, and we're still doing it. And uh, I'm sure, you know, there's going to be like more footage to come. Maybe tonight we'll have more footage. Yeah. <laughs> and that's going to be adding to the, the whole process of the documentary. Yeah. Sure. Okay, sounds cool. Tell me about your voice. Okay, so when I started listening to you back in 1980, whatever it was, yeah. harsh vocals. And when you sing harsh, you can get away with a lot of stuff. Yeah. When you go clean, you can't get away with stuff anymore. Yeah, yeah. What has it been like from you from moving from harsh to clean vocals over the years? Well, over the years, you know, you, you start to create your own sound. I think, uh, you know, at the beginning, I, I was not really able to do anything about hard stuff and then when we started up like doing more complex structures uh, especially in killing technology and stuff you know i i started to kind of like doing melodies more and uh i kept doing it did and, you get a vocal coach or you just no no i think it went naturally because okay. uh i think the songs uh, created that for me and in in you know naturally and uh of course uh when we got to dimension atrus and nothing face then I, I really started to you know be more profound about the voice itself you know and uh, and now my you know the style is more like a combination of these two you know the hard stuff and the smooth stuff and the singing around it and the, the talking and, uh, and the murmurs sometimes and then and a big scream and depends on the, the, the you know the mood of the song you know it, it, that's where you know I, I do my lyrics and I do my stuff around uh, the music itself the music inspired a whole the whole process of writing for me and uh, so I can so I can put like putting putting like a character to the voice you know which is cool yeah yeah uh, did you find when you first made that transition it was kind of difficult or it was just no I don't think it was difficult I think it was it was meant to be at a certain point you know uh, some uh, vocalists just do their own thing I mean they're they try to they, they stay in their uh, niche you know they stay in their genre and because because of the, their, their trademark or something like that but we're never done the and two albums. Uh, uh, we never, we never done things twice, you know. So it, that allows me to explore more and to not being stuck in a genre, you know. So, so for me, um, but I never really forced anything, you know. I just go with the flow. And if yeah. if the music says, oh, this Harsh. is a cool part, yeah. you yeah. can go like smoother or this is more like punchy you know it, it, yeah, it depends it's yeah. the structure of the sound sure. the song that that gives the, what, what the about, whole mood you, you know you're, you're you're francophone you're french canadian right mais vous êtes capable de écrire en anglais aussi wait, right wait. so i mean that that's i mean like it blows my mind you're from the north of quebec you're not even from montreal where and mm -hmm. i'm assuming like you had a little contact with english when growing up right yeah, yeah. how did you start writing English and not only did you write English but you wrote it well like your lyrics are well, well written I, I had a coach at a certain point um, for a few albums uh, but uh, you know I let myself go and uh, <laughs> it's just sometimes I write stuff that doesn't make any sense and then uh, we I go through with uh, sometimes the other boys and uh, um, try to fit with the music and the sound for me it, it's a combination okay what that means that's fine but it has to sound well the words are the words and the singing are an instrument by itself Did you write in French and then translate to English no 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 English? I write by the sound okay All right. if it's if it if it's something would be more efficient if I depending of the the note and depending on uh, 
because every word has as you know as as music in it yeah, yeah absolutely. every word as yeah. if i say sound it's like how yeah, you know it's yeah, a sure, sure, sure. round yeah <laughs> It, it's, it's, it's but you, you still have to have some sort of grasp of the language, though. Because yeah. you, your lyrics aren't just like, baby, baby, I love you, baby, yeah. right? No, no. It's I more complicated than that, right? Yeah, it's a it's the whole kind of subject, really, I, um, from env environmental issues to political kind of like messed up and um, try to combine some of the reality that we live in the world that is... Uh, kind of like growing but too fast and it's destroying itself but <laughs> at the same time and it's like uh, um, and, uh, yeah, there's, there's many sources of, yeah, of, of, no, of I guess what I'm trying to say I commend you on having it as a second language English and yet writing such complicated and interesting lyrics that's what I'm trying to say to you. yeah that's what I'm trying to say. but then again it's, it's it's all about the music what 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 the music inspire me, you know, because yeah. I, I close my eyes and I'm t when I hear what we're playing, it's like, okay, this could be like an adventure or this could be like a war or this could be like a fight or this could be like a, you know, like a dream sort of things. And, 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 and then I start, it's almost like creating a movie in my head, yeah, you know, sure, sure, and, and sure. then I start writing after that you know, yeah. when I got the picture. I got it, I got it. So, okay, so which leads up to like the new album. Well, not yet, but <laughs> working on the new album. So I know you guys are working on, uh, what stage are you at now in terms of a follow-up <laughs> to The Wake? Uh, very beginning. Uh, I think we just slightly put stuff together uh, while we were on tour lately, and um, but never got back to it because we were so busy. Uh, and uh, we're in a really, really early stage, so I cannot really say anything. Have you written about demos? It. Demos? No, it's basically stuff that uh, sometimes when we tour, we, we take the back lounge of the tour bus and we put a laptop there and then we lay down ideas. It's so just, what kind of uh, movies going through your head right now? What kind of ideas? I, 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 Are we talking I, about World War? What are we talking uh, no, about? No, no, no. I'm not at that stage yet. No, I'm not at that stage yet. Sorry. <laughs> I cannot tell. And, and do you think, but in your mind, like, it's, it's going to evolve from the wake, the same, in terms of musical style, right? Yeah. Is it going to be a continuation? I hope so, because the wake was a, was a good transition from post-society to the wake. There was a transition there. You know, we're, we did the EP post-society, and then we wanted to go further on the same direction, but more elaborated, more complex, and more, um, so it's going to be tough, though. To, That's right. To, to, to do gonna, something. You're gonna top a Grammy, uh, uh, Juno, uh, Juno. Sorry, yeah. Juno. Yeah. You gotta top gonna, the other two awards that you're nominated for. Yeah. I mean, you gotta. How are you gonna top this? Is this is like? Yeah, oh, it's, it's gonna, gonna be, be quite a task to to do. But, uh, you know, that's what's what it's all about, right? Yeah, we we'll never know. I mean, we're, we'll we'll go with the flow. It, 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 is it a 2019 or a 2020? Like, there must be some sort of date that you're putting a target. Yeah, but uh, you know how it is, you know, yeah, depending, depending yes. of the record company and the, depending on the timing and depending on all the factors, yeah. the factor that goes with touring and stuff like that. So I don't know. I, uh, right. It's really hard to say uh, from that point. Uh, okay. all right, all right. I just want to leave off on this last note. I never saw Chewy play yet. I never saw him play live yet. And I got to say, if someone was to replace Piggy, that would be the person. I could see him command the stage the same way Piggy sort of commanded the stage. So any comments on that? Man, I, you know, I, when Piggy died, we were like, really, uh, we didn't know what to do. You know, I mean, because Piggy would have such a unique, unique style that we were saying, we're never going to be able to find someone that can pull it out. And... Wow, we I, were I, wrong, I saw that. I and it was it. one one guy, one guy, that could do it. And he grew up with the band. You know, he was like 14 years old when he saw Voiva the first time, and he, was, you know, he would he grabbed his guitar and start playing. Voiva was his favorite band, metal band. Uh, so he really understood how Piggy. Was, was, it's a, it's a, like yeah. I saw him on stage and I go, oh my God, it, it's 
there could be no other person no. but him. No, I don't, uh, he's, he's so perfect. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's here. Okay, here. There, there you go. go. There we go. And that's how we end the show. You're watching The Metal Voice with the one and only Snake. <laughs> <laughs>
that went away and uh, we have to celebrate their lives and their music and to uh, uh, remember what they bring to the, to the metal scene and uh, uh, the emotions that they gave us, you know, and mm -hmm. the memories attached to the music as well, you know. I remember seeing, uh, we, we were playing with uh, Heaven and Hell for four shows mm -hmm. and seeing uh, Roddy, uh, Roddy James Dio sing every night was like, wow, I was <laughs> blown away. Same thing for uh, Motorhead, you know, and uh, we've opened for them a few times. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a hard blow. Uh, each time we have a sad news like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, life goes on and we have to, like Piggy, you know, like when he passed, uh, it was a shock. And uh, I didn't knew him personally, I met him a couple of times, but the best way to to honor him is to play and continue and go on, you know, to play his music every night and, uh, and uh, of course, it, uh, since I'm a Voivod fan uh, from an early age, 11 years old also, uh, I was uh, influenced by, by him and my contribution is to make the other guys happy, you know, and it, it's working good for, for now, since 10 years already. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about your gear now. Uh, what do you use on stage and what do you use in the studio? Uh, yeah, on stage, basically, I have a Fractal Audio FX8, mm -hmm. which is the version, uh, the pedal version of uh, all the effects and uh, stomp boxes, but there's no simulator, uh, cabinet simulator or amp simulator. Mm -hmm. uh, I run it through a head, uh, which is usually a dual rectifier. I use the clean channel only and I use the distortion from the FX8 and all the effects from the FX8 with the four cable methods. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the send return, the loop of the amp, and uh, one volume pedal and one expression pedal for different things that I program mm -hmm. depending on the preset of the song. I have uh, my signature model uh, guitar which is made by Bond guitar, like James Bond, <laughs> but it's made in Montreal. Uh, the luthier is a friend of mine, Louis Philippe Bond, and he designed it. We designed it together, but he has the most incredible piece of wood at his shop, so we can choose which one, you know. Uh, so it, it looks amazing. The wood he, he always came came up with some very uh, very special type of wood. Is it mahogany? The body is mahogany, but the, the top is made of uh, wood that he, I don't know the name of the, the tree, but it, it find it on the internet, it comes from New Zealand, mm -hmm. and it was found under a crust of lava that was covering the whole forest, mm -hmm. and they discover old trees uh, underneath that, and they sell it for uh, instruments or, uh, or furniture or stuff like that, so mm -hmm. it's very fragile, but it's the top, and it's not a hardwood, so the sound is not so uh, trebly, you know, so, so it sounds very, very good, and it looks amazing. Mm -hmm. What about the strings? What about the strings? The strings, I uh, use uh, early balls, mm -hmm. 10 to 46, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, uh, what, was the, what was your first instrument? Piano. Mm -hmm. yeah. How old were you? Uh, around 7, mm -hmm. 6, 7, 8. Well, do you remember your first guitar? Yeah, it was a piece of shit. <laughs> I bought my first guitar, I was uh, around 11 years old, mm -hmm. because I saw the video of Oiva, the Ravenous Medicine, and I, I was impressed by the, their, they made their own instrument yeah. you know, at the time, and there was all cuts in the wood here and there with the red tape. <laughs> I was like, whoa, I want a guitar, I wanted to do just that in life, you know, I want to play and have a band. So I went to the store and I earned money for from a, uh, being a paper boy <laughs> was very bad money, mm -hmm. but uh, after one year I, uh, I, I could uh, buy the cheapest guitar at the store. Mm -hmm. It was a profile and uh, it was made of uh, some wood uh, and it was, it was an awful guitar, but my challenge was, was to make, make it sound good. Mm -hmm. And at first I didn't have an amp because I, I didn't have any money to buy an amp. And uh, so I used the neck on a cardboard box. I put the neck on a cardboard box mm -hmm. so the, the, the vibration mm -hmm. of the string go through the neck to the box. And mm -hmm. the box was my amplifier. Smart. Yeah. 
and uh, I could do that on the walls as well mm -hmm. when the walls were uh, when there's space and all not that one. Mm -hmm. So uh, I did that for six months and uh, or one year, and then I had en enough money to buy a, a small 10 watt Jordan amp. And I didn't even know how to make it sound distorted, so I played for, on the clean channel for many, many months. Mm -hmm. And then I, I figured out that if I put the gain to 10 and the volume to 1, I had distortion and now I was super happy. Mm -hmm. And uh, my, my, uh, my brother and mom was super upset. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. Yeah. I practiced uh, like 8 hours a day. With, uh, it was a nightmare for mm -hmm. everybody around. And what was your first album, the first that, that you ever bought? Killing Technology of Voivod. Mm -hmm. yeah. With a cassette, went to the store with my bicycle. <laughs> I was 11, same year. And uh, I bought this. And maybe at the same time, or not so long after, I bought the Testament, uh, the Legacy, mm -hmm. or the New Order, or both. Mm -hmm. But yeah, first album I bought with my money was uh, Voivod Killing Technology. And what was the first show as a fan? Voivod, <laughs> 13 year old, uh, they played in my town, it was the Nothing Face Tour. Mm -hmm. And it was my first metal show ever. I was the youngest guy in the crowd. Mm -hmm. Everybody was taller than me with long hair. And, uh, I didn't have beard at the time. <laughs> but I was super impressed and I could smell some strange smoke and stuff. And, uh, I was in front for most of the show and then this, the mush just started and I stayed there, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, it was amazing, amazing, amazing show. And uh, at the end of the show I was in front of the speaker because it was too much violent, the, the mush pit for me. Mm -hmm. So I was a little bit on the side but I could feel people uh, uh, in my back and stuff. And, uh, I couldn't hear anything after the show because I was in front of this, the loudspeaker and then I left uh, during the last song. But uh, it was a changing, uh, life changing experience. Mm -hmm. I think I was also around 13 or 14 when I saw Boy about first. And what was your first show as a musician? The first uh, guitar uh, was in my own band, Martyr. Mm -hmm. Martyr, and I was 14 year old. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, two composition and a Metallica song. Only three songs. And what was your first show like with uh, Voivod? My first show with Voivod was 10 years ago in, in July. It was a big festival. We were uh, uh, at Heavy MTL in Montreal. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a big festival with Iron Maiden and Motley Crue and mm -hmm. a lot of many, many bands. And uh, it was supposed to be the only show for the band, you know, mm -hmm. only like a tribute to PD and uh, and then uh, we opened for Ozzy in Calgary and then we flew to Japan and we opened for Judas Priest uh, in Canada, Montreal and it never stopped. And we, uh, I celebrated my 10 years in, uh, in the band this summer at the same festival we started 10 years ago. <laughs> so uh, it was a good feeling. Alright, uh, last few questions. Uh, what are your plans after this tour? Touring, touring, touring. May, we may write uh, some new music soon, you know. Uh, during tours, between tours, but uh, I think we're going to tour uh, for a while with mm -hmm. this album. Uh, so far so good, the, the reviews are great and uh, the album's not out yet, but uh, we have a very good feeling about it. And we have a lot of 9, 9.5 on 10 reviews, you know, all positive. So I think it's a very strong album that Voivod fans will really like and uh, we're very excited about it. So we're going to tour as much as we can everywhere on the planet because before it, it explodes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Looking forward to hear that. Yes. Uh, please list your five favorite albums of all time. <laughs> I know everyone's favorite. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I, I have a, a hard time with that, that kind of question, but I, I don't have five favorite album mm -hmm. of all time. That's the that's the trick for me. Like that's the tricky tricky question because every week is a different one. Mm -hmm. the, of course some Voivod album. Uh, maybe Killing Technology would be in that list. <coughs> because it, the, it's the album that's gave me the uh, the, uh, the guts to buy a guitar and mm -hmm. start my career. Uh, what's the meaning of life? 
do your best, I guess, and uh, connect with people. Any message to your fans? We're very excited about the new album and we're really happy to be here in, uh, in Budapest again. And uh, we really hope you enjoy the new music and you celebrate with us the 35th anniversary of the band. See you soon. Thank you very much for the interview. Thank you, my friend. Hello everybody, I'm Diamond Oz, aka All The Wines, because that's my real name, from metalunderground.com. And I'm very happy and honored to say that once again we're here with Away from Boyboy. Hello. <laughs> yeah, the new Alonge. <laughs> I, I probably pronounced that totally wrong. No, La Lange of Vain. La Lange of Vain is about it. Mon Francais. Okay, cool. Well, um, straight into it, the new album, The Wake, is finally out. Mm -hmm. It's been a five year wait in between this and the target. Right? It's a very uh, ambitious album. Yeah. Um, now that it's out, well, I suppose the first thing to ask really is the story because it's a concept album. So is yeah. there a little bit about the story behind the album? I could but I mean Snake I could tell you more about it. Okay. But um, as soon as we uh, started working on it maybe three years ago, uh, Snake mentioned that he wanted to uh, write a long story uh, and um, through the album and then uh, to we immediately thought about um, bring, bringing back musical themes uh, but we arranged throughout the album, a bit like Damage and Atlas. So uh, everything was like, we wrote the album and the lyrics and uh, together. And, and uh, I know that um, uh, at first uh, Snake uh, talks about uh, some uh, undersea uh, disaster that's being triggered and that there's a big revelation and it changes. Uh, all the systems, uh, religious, social, um, everything is upside down. Um, uh, in the middle of the album, it becomes very introspective, and um, uh, in the end, it's totally uh, intergalactic. <laughs> so I think he wanted to touch all the subjects he was interested in uh, uh, through the album. It's I know it's closely related to uh, this planet and uh, the state it, it is in. But in the typical post-apocalyptic sci-fi way, but in a way, yeah, in, in a way, then uh, from going to like an underwater disaster or to intergalactic, it's, it's almost the best of way, but I know what you mean, and um, we also, I think. Um, Touch all the aspects of Voivod, uh, from war and pain to enter that to uh, with a new twist, and um, so uh, I think all the uh, all, all the the Voivod and uh, elements on there. Excellent. Uh, well, one thing I know I can ask you about is the artwork, mm -hmm. which is incredible. Oh, thank you. It always is for Voivod. It always is. Thanks for that. And um, it's very. I think a very special artwork in the way that it, it kind of fits in with what you're saying, with the lyrically being like an awakening, is that where it's, for lack of a better word, is waving, it's, it's almost like a head trip just looking at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that fits in so well with the... Um, yeah, okay. I really wanted to capture the intensity of the album, and uh, a bit like I did uh, for War and Pain or Roar, yeah. So uh, I had the flash of uh, using the Photoshop paintbrush instead of Photoshop airbrush, which I had done for decades. And uh, uh, so uh, it's a new path for me and, um, that I want to follow. Um, and I was uh, discussing the lyrical, uh, lyrical content uh, with Snake. And um, he kept telling me about uh, the aftermath of this, the aftermath of that. We had a very close like, apocalyptic feel to it. And um, so uh, I thought about uh, the four of us as volleyball um, uh, holding a vigil, I think, yeah, a vigil um, for the, a dying planet. And musically, it's a very. Um, it, it's all interconnected very well. The music is very intense, but you have to think about it as well. It's not some, It's not an easy listen. When you were writing the album, was it a, a conscious decision to really touch on the 
the more progressive elements? Oh, I think it's um, I think it's um, the the lineup we have right now is uh, more fusion metal, and that's uh, the, that's I think the direction we are heading right now. Um, it's uh, it's hard to tell. We we will definitely uh, try to push it forward. <laughs> Uh, even though we don't know how to uh, right now, but uh, I guess it, it was so much uh, work and uh, we worked so much on the details for this album. And uh, uh, we made it very experimental and progressive. And uh, uh, right now, um, it's hard to imagine that we can uh, go uh, for, uh, like, uh, <laughs> further away in a parallel dimension, but uh, I will try to. If yeah. anyone can do it. <laughs> Um, with this being the 35th anniversary of Boy Dog, is it important to you to have a new album now to mark this anniversary? We, yeah, we really wanted it out uh, for uh, this year. We tried to have it out uh, for the summer, but it was impossible because we just uh, went crazy and uh, did layers of music over the winter and uh, worked really hard on the mix. And so, uh, but finally it's out uh, for the you know for the fall. And so, uh, but it was important to celebrate the 25th anniversary uh, with a new album for us. Now it's eight songs just under an hour. Was it a case of you were aiming for the double album and you thought, well, this isn't really good? Well. Uh, like uh, I, uh, I think I meant a double vinyl. Um, oh, right now you can cram a lot of music on a CD, yeah. but uh, it's harder when the time uh, comes to release it on vinyl. Uh, so um, I was pretty sure with the uh, length of the songs that it was going to be a double vinyl at least. And um, so, uh, and especially that uh, the final uh, song was supposed to be instrumental and a couple of minutes long, and. Uh, Snake decided to add vocals, and Chewie decided to like use riffs from all over the album, but rearrange, and then it en ends up being like 13 minutes or something. And uh, so, uh, in the end, it's a fairly long um, album. You mentioned Dimension Natural's there, which I was listening to on the train journey up, because it's still classic. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a concept album as well. Yeah. So. When you were writing the wake, was there a, a lot of comparisons to Dimension Actros? And we did it like this way before? Or, uh, Not necessarily. We did uh, make a, sort of a salute to Jack Luminous uh, in the last song of the album. Uh, but uh, we didn't think about Phobos or Dimension Actros while uh, doing the album. And Chewie is the main composer. And um, uh, it, yeah. How can I say? Um, he, he gives Voivod a, uh, a new direction, yeah. And uh, so, uh, of course, it will probably be compared to Dimension Atlas and Phobos because they're four and tons of albums. Um, but, um, uh, anyway, it's uh, uh, it's just um, this, the Voivod signature uh, and spirit uh, it is uh, intact. Um, but it's not something we think about, it's just uh, you know, run. Very good. Um, I've seen you a couple of times this year already, you know, 7,000 times a which you're actually staying in the room across me. And uh, I was going to ask how that went, but I just bought a special edition of the week, you should too. And I noticed the, um, the show is on there as a bonus piece, yeah, which is right. very cool, so you must have been very pleased to have that one. Yes, and um, um, it sounds really good, and also we got footage from it, so maybe something we can do something with it. Um, and um, uh, it's, all, it's a fantastic trip to be on the, the, the second 2000 Tons of Metal. Uh, we did two editions, and uh, it's fun to meet the people we've toured with over the decades, like Exodus, Sepultura, Testament, and everybody is there. And it's also very cool to meet uh, our heroes, uh, in my case, uh, Raven, Saxon, Exciter, and so um, uh, great, great trip, and we were lucky to be invited twice, so uh, yeah, super. I, I watched both sets, both were just amazing. Mm -hmm.
We had so much machine, I was dancing on it. It was fucking yeah. idiot. Right? It was so good. It's kind of funny that we ended up on some island in the Bermuda Triangle, and I would have never believed that in my life. <laughs> I didn't know that's what it was. It's what, right inside of the one of the, the lines of the triangle. <laughs> so. <laughs> there we go. We need to go into hypnotic regression now. <laughs> <laughs> but if there's any band that can do a soundtrack for the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> very cool and very cool. Um, yeah, just um, one thing I wanted to ask about uh, the album, um, lyrically and um, thematically, was uh, your personal opinion. If, if the uh, story involves a great awakening, if you like, if you mm -hmm. Do you personally believe that humanity can reach a higher plane than we are now? Because with everything that's going on, so I think sometimes the science fiction. Yeah. I don't even know if. I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't even know if we have enough time to wake up at uh, this point. Um, soon we're gonna be uh, on, uh, living on a huge ball of plastic, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, with. Uh, global warming going crazy and all that so um, I think it'd be the first uh, awakening to uh, to be done would be to try to save the planet from the pollution uh, and then then we can move on after but if we don't do that first yeah. and of course there is also the piles of nuclear weapons everywhere on earth and all that so um, yeah uh, that's um, and that's something uh, that's been a recurring nightmare for me uh, for, uh, the, since I was a kid. And uh, uh, I think uh, that would be the, the, really the first step before any type of uh, uh, consciousness uh, awakening. <laughs> well, thank you very much. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. And uh, start awakening yourself by the way. Chibi Cavs, 5150, thank you for watching. Uh, today's a very special day for me. I know that I've said this before in the past, but uh, one of the things that I enjoy immensely is when I meet iconic, groundbreaking, innovative performers that touched me when I was, can you believe I used to be a young kid, man? <laughs> uh, here I am with Snake and Chewy of Voivod. Thank you for being here. Thanks. Let's get into it. You're performing tonight in Los Angeles. Uh, you're on tour supporting The Wake, which was the release that you just, the new release that came out last year of September. How are you enjoying performing here uh, on the tour? Oh, it's great. I mean, uh, this record is something really special. I think we put a lot of uh, effort into it. It took like three years to put it together. And, um, you know, Playing live, it's something that you cannot really describe. It's sometimes it's just like so fun to share with people. And what amazes me now is just that it's only one years old, and people knows the lyrics and they're they're really into it. And so I think um, after all that work, you know, after, when you work hard, it pays off somehow. It's, it's just that, and uh, it's, it's a great feeling. Yeah. I'm going to try and not be a fan because uh, a majority of my audience hate when I get fanboyed out. But I want to say this. Both of you did an amazing job. Well, the whole band did an amazing job on this record. As a longtime fan like yourself, um, one of the things that's very interesting about the whole Voivod dimension, interdimension, mm -hmm. is the fact that from the beginnings to present day, there's been so much evolution creatively artistically musically but as we discussed the last time the passing of piggy and that unfortunate uh, human factor it tends to affect certain artists not yourselves but in the past it has affected certain audience where they they are unable to recoup that creative force or they feel stagnated and alienated because now they feel that they have to appease the fans with what they know, which leads my next question to you, Chewie. Uh, congratulations. I really love the fact on this record, which not only you participated in, 
but you were able to achieve your own identity. No disrespect to Piggy, but what I mean by that is on this record, it's the next evolution, the next chapter, the next phase, and you're very prominently involved with you being Chewy. Mm. How do you feel about that? Well, of course, uh, when uh, we worked on Target Earth, uh, which came out in 2013, I think, or 12, uh, it was the first time we would work together as a, for composing and everything, and I had this kind of shadow uh, uh, of what Voivod should sound like or would sound like without Piggy, and, you know, I was pretty worried about that when I was writing riffs and ideas but at the same time after a while I just let go of it because I thought I'm a fan of Voivod since I'm 11 years old it's the band that I've listened to the most in my entire life you know uh, and I've listened to a lot of stuff like different genre but Voivod was always the center and uh, it always gave me a lot of uh, uh, how do you say Voivod was so unique that everything else for me was kind of bland like i i always was looking for this spark of originality and uniqueness in everything else that i've listened to and when i uh, became a musician and a composer i wanted to have this this thing but i think i already had it because of what i was listening to right. so it's kind of uh, grew up in me naturally so when uh, we did the Target Earth, uh, after a while, I became more, more comfortable and uh, and uh, more natural as, at writing and without asking too much question to myself. And then we did the, uh, a few years later, we work on Post Society with the new lineup. So something kind of opened for all of us with the new dynamics of the new lineup, and we uh, we would work together without any ego in the way. You know, once an idea was out there, it was everybody's ideas. It was not my or his or whatever. And we would work together to make it the best uh, idea, the best music possible. And uh, it became Voivod music right away. Like uh, as soon as Michel is playing and Snake is singing, it becomes Voivod colors. And, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty magical. So for the wake, we had the team with Francis who produced Post Society, and we developed this way of working, what, who, uh, which worked really well, um, and uh, it was very easy then to, you know, uh, to know in advance what kind of uh, a step uh, process we would take to to make it uh, in the studio and be ready for uh, every part and every song, except for one, <laughs> Sonic Mycelium, the last song of the album, uh, I had to write between two gigs in Montreal, a TV show that I do every year to help kids in the street uh, participate in it as a freelance, but uh, uh, Michel is a very fast uh, recording uh, drummer, uh, he, do, he does everything pretty much uh, uh, one take and he does different takes and until it's satisfactory but uh, so after a week of drumming not even a week it was done with the drum track and this song was not finished <laughs> <laughs> so Pressure's on, yeah huh? yeah yeah and I had this idea of, of uh, using the main theme of every song and put it together as a puzzle and uh, so I had two two or two days and a, and a half to to finish it uh, at home because it was the only song that we didn't re rehearse at all we didn't we haven't seen each other to practice so i uh i did the puzzle and everything and uh, so we could finish the drum tracks and uh, it ended up to be 12 minutes of music and i had only like maybe two or three minutes uh done uh, before that so uh that was one uh, <laughs> that was that one was pretty stressful but it came out good i think maybe with the pressure and and everything and snake uh, also had this idea to make to use the main vocal themes from every song and put it over, over other part of other songs you know like it's quite interesting for the fan that listened to it because it's kind of a puzzle and it's it's interactive in the way that oh 
you know, when you discover that, oh, that is the vocal from that song, but that is the riff from this other song. It, it's not in the same key, in the same tempo, you know, unconsciously, uh, not really a, in, a, in a knowledge kind of approach, un unless you're a musician or, or educated musician or whatever. But uh, anyway, so uh, we worked all together very hard. It was a very fun process, too. Uh, we had was a lot of... Yes. Like a, like a puzzle thing. It was a taking like one line from one song and then, oh, maybe I can sing the melody of that song with that line on that riff. And it's like, does it work? And then it's like, uh, yeah, I think it would work. And then, you know, next, next part, same thing. Okay, I'm going to take like this part, singing that that phrase but with another melody with another whatever surrounding musical uh, surrounding or whatever and so it became like a, a fun thing to do and um, I was all thrilled about it because at the beginning when he, he came up with the idea I said yeah but I have no time to do anything I'm, I'm gonna be <laughs> what am I gonna do with that and time the greatest enemy and then uh, you know I was like kind of rushed and uh, so I decided, hey, listen, you know, I, I should go easy with it and just have, have fun with it, you know, instead of taking it too seriously. And uh, it, you know, it paid off. I mean, it's a, something that, we, that is for the listener, you know, he's going to go like, hey, I've, I've heard that. I have heard that before, but I can't remember the song because it's a different melody, but it's the same line. <laughs> and it's like, confuses people a bit, you know, so... Yeah, it was really fun to do. This, this is not new. You've you've uh, uh, in your past releases some more than others. You've always have <clears throat> dealt with the subconscious and uh, the psychic of the mind. And what I mean by that, even from uh, a ways artwork, the storylines, the uh, the Voivod universe. You remember the conservative era of the 80s. You remember how extreme it got. I don't think Canada had this problem. Uh, actually, you're in the sanctuary up there. But in the United States during the 80s, it, uh, the extremity of abolishing freedoms and especially artistic freedoms went to the maximum where they're trying to implement laws. You're a part of that decade. It seems that within these last maybe four years, we're regressing back to that. Comedians are dealing with that now, where they're being censored or they're being banned for ex crossing certain boundaries of uh, what we what we would call angst, rebellious, creative, outlawish mm -hmm. art. Mm -hmm. Voivod's a part of that. Be that as it may, this record has an outlaw element to it it has the feeling to it but yet you're able to artistically remain in what i would say this majestic zone of evolvement mm -hmm. where it's of a higher intellect that's how i interpret it when i listen to the music i find myself drifting into dimensions mm -hmm. does that happen to you when you're writing that and is that the purpose i think it's yeah mostly the purpose because saying like uh, things directly too much like when it's, it's too much direct it's like this is my opinion on something and i'm convinced of that sometimes it's better just to like say something that it's kind of like more open more poetic, poetic in a sense uh you know you know what i'm you know the meaning behind the words but it's not like saying this is that, you know, it's just like it suggests, suggests something. And then as you as the music flows, it's a suggestion it, and then another suggestion. And then poetically, it flows with the music. And it's I think it has more efficiency than saying, oh, this, this, that, this, you know, and stay. Yeah. So I, I think uh, and then. You can, you, by doing that, I think you can create your own story, you know, instead of, uh, of trying to, because sometimes people understand, you know, like, like a lyric sheet, let's say, 
they will make their own story because it's not like a story by itself. It's not like a direct thing. It goes like, okay, that that phrase, another phrase, another phrase. But it's not like really linked together in a sense that uh, it is in a way, but it has the, the space in between the lines so you can go and make your own thinking. And um, so for some people it will mean that and some maybe some other people will think about something else for the same lyric sheet so uh, I, I prefer to be uh, not too much uh, uh, pointing stuff it more like okay this is a picture but you can fuck, you can put it backwards if you want yeah. and it's going to be another picture <laughs> and so you know, uh, it, remi it reminds me of the famous painter Pollock. Yeah. And then he, the audience would interpret what they would see. Yeah, exactly. You know, and if I, if I turn it upside down, you'll see something different. You know, so... It's all a matter of perspective. Yeah. Perspective is very important in art. You, you see a sculpture and you see it from another angle and it's different. You know? yeah. So it's the same with music, I think. Yeah, yeah. totally. This question is for both of you, especially since we're discussing the wake. How have you been able, I mean, you answered part of it already because uh, the friendship, the bond, uh, the unity. But how have you been able to still keep creatively innovative in this new realm of creativity that you're going to, the subject matter, without being mundane and repetitive? You've achieved that very, very well. How is that possible? Well, uh, I think we just go with the flow naturally. We don't want, you know, we never sat and say, oh, we're going to do this or do that. We're, we're kind of like somebody brings something or um, could be like, uh, oh, you know, those soundtrack, you know, the old you know, movie soundtrack or whatever that sounded like uh, this or that. And then, yeah, maybe, you know, we can take, be inspired by that but doing something completely different and so when someone brings up an idea like he said earlier it's not my idea it's it's the idea that i put there but from that point on it can it's go true. everywhere you know and 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 we work for the song we don't work as for a personal achievement it's not our personal achievement you know it's it's it, it's all put together uh and we all work for the best for the song if if the best for the song is to say that note that goes <laughs> that goes with his whatever what he's doing well okay then i'll do uh and that would that would be it because because it, it it it's it fits the song and it's perfect and it's for, it's perfect for us in a sense, but I mean, um, it's not an ego trip, you know. It's not like yeah. oh, I'm gonna do this, and then you guys, uh, you know, because I there's no I, it's us, you know, and and I think uh, that's the way it goes. As for putting the ideas together, and sometimes he's gonna bring a riff. And like that song, uh, Obsolete Beings, he came to the rehearsal place. He said, hey, I had an idea last night. And then, boom, I had the melody that fits right there. It's like, he said, stop, stop, let's record this. Fuck, this is genius. And fucking, you know, he was like panicking because he thought that I would forget about it and say, you know, so immediately we, we recorded it and it was instant uh, inspiration yeah. as, spontaneous. as spontaneous. Spontaneous. spontaneity is very very important snake has this talent of finding his way <laughs> through the chaos he, he's, he's like we're playing some pretty complex scores you know like but Structure, he's yeah. he's always been in that context but he's like hitting the right notes even though the, the chords the harmony are complex and everything He's gonna, he's gonna find his way to 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 put this beautiful and simple enough melody to you, that so everybody can 
uh, remember it right away. Yeah, it's a, uh, he's a really good at hooks, and uh, and uh, yeah, that that moment was was kind of magical. It was like, and I I used the melody, this, the same melody for starting my solo on the song because there was nothing else I could say. <laughs> because it's the perfect phrase right there, musical phrase that fits in the music. Well, I've learned, I've learned a lot from Piggy for that matter, because Piggy had always had these complex tones and structures. And, you know, when I start doing Voivod, I had no experience at singing at all. So He's a very mature so, so, musician. Would you think? Yeah, and so I jump into the wagon and, and oh, what am I going to do? I don't know. And then, but uh, I've learned... To go to f go with the flow with this crazy music, and I kind of like make my own style out of it, you know, sort of. And uh, you and guys always, you guys always been uh, looking for new things. Yeah. Uh, and that there's no uh, Voivod album that sounds the same, or the approach is always different. And, and Angel Rat is very different from War release has been very uh, uh, creatively independent and stands on its own mm -hmm. my question to you is is there an album where you look back now and and uh, not cringe upon mm -hmm. but is there an album that you go back now and that either resurrects that youth gone days that you would like to perform or reminds you of how far you've come basically I think it's a matter of uh when I look back, sometimes uh, I'm not saying that I would do something any different. I I, I think every album has, was recorded in that studio and we were like doing that thing on that time. And it's like it's it's time related. And I cannot say because if I would do redo it, let's say it would it would it, it would it would be other things because you would uh, alter time. yeah exactly so that's why it's important uh, uh, to keep to keep the thing as it is it, it's like okay that let's say it's like a painting you know oh, I did a painting I had this to do that by then I had this brush I had that kind of paint I, there was uh, humidity in the house, and uh, it kind of like melt down on the hall like this, <laughs> and and dried, it dried away, dried, and that's it. It's just, it's uh, it's locked in time. And speaking of locked in time, uh, yesterday we played uh, Petaluma. And a friend of ours, uh, who was a uh, Jason Newstead assistant, oh. came with uh, Piggy's guitar, metallic oh. guitar that was um, uh, stuck in the storage room for 16 years, wow. 17 years. And the last time it saw the light was in 2003 in uh, Florida wow. at the end of the office. Yesterday, he brought it back. We opened it. The tuning was still Piggy's tuning. Wow. Same string. We were so amazed. We decided to, uh, he decided to, uh, well, we are all decided. It was, it was always an idea, yeah. I think, at first. Yeah. And I was like, you know, yeah. <laughs> almost uncomfortable to play. To play so it. his DNA was actually on yeah. the guitar still. That's amazing. Same string. The last song that he played with it was Voivod, and yesterday he played Voivod with it wow. with the same string. Will you be performing that in Los Angeles tonight? Yes. There you go. <laughs> but uh, the thing is, like, it was so amazing, and he would have turned 60 like uh, a few days ago. Ah, oh, so young. So man. it's like everything's recouped, kind of thing. It's like his birthday was uh, a few days ago. They were all kind of like, oh, he would have turned 60, man. It was like, yeah, well, kind of emotional there. But it was so emotional as well yesterday. It was like, oh, my God, that guitar, you know. I was playing the guitar. I couldn't believe it myself. Very honored to play with it. And uh, and I was looking at Snake's face during yeah, the show. And we were like <laughs> looking at each other. Is this, is this it's so surreal, you know? And uh, it's my mentor's 
uh, guitar, yeah. you know, my with music the spirit mentor, of life. playing with those guys and they look at the guitar and it's alive again and it's ringing and, you know, it's, it's there's no words to it, right? We could go on forever. Yeah. I, I know you guys got to get ready for your performance. One final question. The last time we discussed Voivod's creativity, the dimensions not only of artistically where you've gone, but how perfectly, even if people are not aware of Voivod, which is hard to believe because uh, you do know that you're in regions of the world that mm -hmm. you can't even think people are listening to music when they're dealing with survival. Yeah. Um, be that as it may, you are able to cross into the mainstream. And what I mean by the mainstream is, is your music is so uh, interdimensional where you could be in science fiction movies or not even science fiction per se, movies, movie soundtracks, uh, plays. Is any of that have been approached to you? Has that have been any of those endeavors been approached to you? And would you tackle that type of uh of course, uh, if we have uh, an offer to do some kind of things like that, we will be, we will be the first to say yes. You know, I mean, uh, it piques your interest, right? Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's to well, well. We try to make our home thing, like uh, that song, "The End of Dormancy" on the last record. We, it is sort of like, well, when we were in the studio and it came out to be a, sort of like a soundtrack, a movie soundtrack kind of thing, but. Um, if ever someone want to use it uh, in their movie, but it would be great to do like a special project, uh, you know, like uh, compose stuff for a particular project. That would be so awesome. Is, it a, is it a rumor or is it true that with the reboot of the Twilight Zone that you were asked to perform music for certain episodes? Mm. Talking about the new one. No, well, I, I I don't have that information. I think maybe something happened. I don't know. I I really don't know if it's uh, there. Contact the management. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> and so, as the teenage denim and leather fan from the Iron Gang of 1984. Yeah. By the way, I never got my shirt. Yeah. Um, <laughs> never forgot that. I still have the money order. Uh, to now, almost 50 years old, as a grown adult, I must say that I look forward to seeing you perform. I love the new record, The Wake on Century Media. Get it now. On tour, catch them. Because appreciate true art when you have it. Because we are all energy. Mm -hmm. And eventually we cross, regardless of religious bases or not, we all cross to interdimensions that we are not aware of. With that... Thank you so much for watching the 5150. Thank you, Snake. Thank you, Chewy. Thank you. Pleasure to finally talk to you. And I look forward. I'm not going to say I'm going to stage dive, but yeah. I'll still headbang a little bit because my next can't take it. With that, be safe, be good, Thank you. be well. Thank you.